Hey, welcome everybody. And I'm here to uh, show a little bit more about Rhino inside uh, Revit and some ways you can use it. In this case, uh, we're going to concentrate on uh, an analytical model, structural engineering model, uh, and, and how we can use the analytical information out of Revit to combine that information with other information. For instance, maybe uh, could be Excel spreadsheet, could be, uh, in this case, to get it off to an analytical analysis tools. Uh, and, and how we can do that all together, use Grasshopper to really bring all this information together in a dynamic uh, situation. So we have a, a model here that, that we were sent, um, structural model, and, and I have a definition here that uh, goes through. And as I've shown in other videos, um, you know, we can go through and look at categories and grab all the objects off the categories. In this case, I'm looking at the analytical categories, in this case, the analytical beams. And I grab all the elements off those uh, out of that uh, category. In this case, uh, you know, I can convert them to lines. Uh, and then uh, maybe we'll, uh, in this case, I'll turn on here the endpoints of those analytical beams. You can see uh, what Revit does here is, is that it has the beams and then it has some intermediate points here, which I expect uh, has something to do with uh, if you want a special uh, joint condition. In this case, that's not what we want. So we can use Grasshopper. Um, I'll just turn these off. We can use Grasshopper to grab those lines and simplify them. And, and so what we'll get instead is, is more of the simplified uh, kind of beams uh, in this case. And so Grasshopper went through and cleaned up uh, that definition. And so we have a much simpler model. And we have singular elements across uh, here. One way we can use Grasshopper to clean up uh, the analytical model a little bit on the fly uh, you know, we can grab the walls, uh, we can grab the columns, in this case, uh, a part of this model, uh, the floors. Now, you'll also see that there's some lighter elements here, some lighter extrusions and, and some cross bracing here that don't show up in the analytical model. And the reason is, is that whoever modeled this in the first place did not turn on the analytical model for those objects. And uh, it's nice, we can take Grasshopper here grab those objects that are do not have the analytical model set to them and then we can actually if i just turn on these uh these uh components here we can actually turn on using you're just setting the parameter enable analytical model on the objects and i'll just recalculate here and you'll see what grasshopper does is it turns on the enable analytical model parameter on those objects revit will then calculate an analytical model object for those objects. And then Grasshopper can pick that information back up, up here, for instance, for the beams. And you could do the cross bracing or whatever it is and take it through So and simplify it. So now you can see we have the cross bracing, we have the lighter choice to frame, framing here. And uh, so we can use that now in our tool. Uh, just to see, kind of the information because we actually have the Revit analytical objects and we can look back at the the information on those analytical models. Uh, I'm just going to turn on layers here. What we can do is you just to show, I'm just going to have a bake, bake component here. I'm going to press this button. And what it'll go through, and it'll go through all those analytical beams and it will sort them by type. And so in this case, I know my circular section, what life trace we are, what kind of the round bar is. And then it creates, a it creates a layer for each one of those and then also puts those objects and bakes those into to Rhino. And so just to kind of see the level of detail we have on all those objects in Grasshopper so that you can combine it and, and change that information as you need based on other information you have about the project. So that so that's one kind of level of, of detail that, that's interesting. Another another idea is instead of having to bake this information into or into Rhino and then send that off to another analysis tool, we can actually just grab the information and the geometry out of Revit and then turn right around in Grasshopper and push it right back out to analytics. So in this case we're using uh Karumba, which is the uh, uh, built in one of the uh Plugins for for Grasshopper allows us to do some some structural calculations, but this could be any any of the structural uh, tools that you currently use, probably. Uh, so 
we simplify those curves again and we grab, in this case, we're grabbing the columns. And so we push that column line into the ability to make column elements uh, in Karumba. And then uh, we'll grab the endpoint of those columns and we'll create a uh, end condition, a, a support at the base of each one of those columns. And, uh, and then we can add something like, in this case, something simple like gravity. And then we have now a simple model that we can run our analysis on. What's interesting too is that because once I get this information back out, the actually results of the calculation, we could technically push the results back onto the Revit objects through parameters using Grasshopper, all within the same definition. And so there's a lot of, you can see how we can push and pull and grab information and really uh, manipulate it in Grasshopper and then actually push it back to wherever we need to store that information. For instance, let's say back on the Revit model, if we're going to send that back out um, as the results of our analysis or maybe in a report or Excel spreadsheet or something like that. So uh, without actually having to bake it ever in Rhino. So I hope this shows uh, some of the uh, quick ways that we can use the information in an analytical model um, in Revit using Rhino inside and Grasshopper. And uh, it'll lead to some ideas on some workflows that, that should be a little bit smoother, a little bit quicker than what you've been able to do before. The uh, samples on this, on this video, give it a try. We'd love to hear from you.